sales, what I'm doing to close the deal, what I say on my first meeting, um, and then what I do even after the first meeting to get these customers to sign up with me and then you know let me <laughs> handle their marketing. Uh, so I made a list of things for you guys, going old school, writing it on paper. Um, writing is still not dead. It's a really great way to actually plan and do stuff. So if you guys are just trying to do everything on a computer, I, don't, I recommend doing a little bit of both. Helps you remember things better. Anyways, getting away from that. Um, so what am I doing? to close these deals, what am I saying on the first meeting, the second meeting if it requires it, because a lot of these things require you know, not just one meeting, but two meetings, maybe three, four, before you close the deal with these guys. So I'm gonna go into kind of the steps that I take, what I do, what I say, um, you know, and how, how you need to approach these businesses before you can actually sell them your services. So first thing is, how am I even getting these customers? And I've gone over this before in some of the previous videos, um, I uploaded the audit template that you guys love and are using. Um, I think you guys are using it, at least I get a lot of people asking me still, and I released that video three months ago, I still get people to this day asking about the audit. So glad you guys are getting some value out of that. But that's the first thing I do. I build the audit and I give it to the businesses for free. I send that to them via email or Facebook Messenger, Instagram. I literally reach out to them every single way I possibly can to try and let them know I've sent them some free information um, that's going to be beneficial to them and help them, you know, grow their business. So that's the first thing I do. But the most important thing that I think you can do to build customers is simply just networking. And I've I've been a huge huge believer in networking my whole life. Um, all through college, I never once filled out an application for a job before I got hired for that job. I actually was usually hired, and then I'd fill out the application after I'd already been hired because you have to do that legally. So. That, that basically is my point, is networking with people, getting to know people, and I guess, I guess I should back up. The whole reason I even got those jobs was because I either knew someone that worked there or I found out who worked there and I would try and find a way to build a relationship with them. If that meant going up there and eating and then just talking to them randomly, at least they could put a name and a face together when they saw me for an opportunity or something like that or a job or something like that. So. Um, networking is the biggest thing and it's not just networking in local groups and stuff like that like your uh, B and B uh, what's it called um, B and I like your local B and I networks or your Chamber of Commerce yes those are great places because all of those people are focused on business but you also have to think they're all trying to focus on business so what are they more concerned with making sales for their business so what I try to do is I build relationships with everybody and I talk to everybody about my business. When I go into a gas station that I frequent, I'll talk to the person who I see at the register and ask them what they're doing or if they know who I should talk to about that business. Um, there's actually a big chain here that I'm working on called Flash Foods. I'll tell you guys who it is. Flash Foods Gas Stations is pretty big in the southeast or not really the southeast, but in Georgia and Florida, they're doing really well. Um, I think they have over 50 locations or something like that. So. You know, I know one of the ladies who runs one of those gas stations and she has a great relationship with the corporate branch. So I'm talking with her and she's actually going to be putting my name in the in to their ear and I told her basically that I would give her ten percent of whatever I make off of them monthly. You know, that's a way to get them to do the work for you. It, it entices them because you're not just saying, hey, help me out, do me a favor. You're saying, you do me this favor, I'll help you out because you're helping me make money. So um, that's that. One other way, uh, so from one of my other businesses, I actually have a client. This is where I got my $5,000 a month client that I just closed. Um, I have a client who is in real estate, and I know he's one of the top real estate agents at that real estate company, and that's a big company for them. I'm not going to put any names out there, but he's a very, very big real estate agent for them. So what does that mean to me? It means I know he has connections. Number one, because I know he's in commercial real estate. I asked him about that. I asked him what he does to build that relationship with him. He's in commercial real estate. That means he knows tons of business owners looking to buy commercial property, which means those are new businesses that are going to need marketing. So that's where I come in. Um, but I've built that relationship with him, and I just kind of let, you know, I would ease into conversation about talking about what I do and how I'm helping businesses generate revenue. So that's going to be that's going to be one of the biggest keys is just meeting people and talking with them asking them their interests the other thing you have to know is a lot of you guys are younger so your friends 
your you know day to day friends aren't going to be as helpful for you unless they're you know working at a place where they can get you in with somebody. That'll be about the only way. I have some friends who work at corporate locations that they can talk to their managers and stuff like that about me and see. But you know usually that's not going to be the best way. The best way is to know an older generation get get to know some older people because they're more established in their careers and in their industries. They have contacts that you can utilize to your benefit. So that's the biggest thing. I really think that networking is the best way to get customers. I mean, the audit is great. I'm not saying that. Free stuff like free logo design or free month of Facebook advertising, I'm not saying that doesn't work. I'm sure it does. But I prefer networking. Networking is the best way to do it. I love meeting new people. It always comes with a benefit. And that's the thing. To me, when I first started out, I was more focused on what I could get out of, out of it for myself. But now it's just great. You, you, when you stop focusing on what you can get out of it for yourself and just building a relationship with that person and becoming a way or building a way to mutually help each other, that's really what's going to help you gain new customers and great rela relationships for business in the future. Um, my accountant is one of my best friends. Uh, let's see, a bunch of the guys who I contract with who do my web development um, and design, um, who do any type of graphic design, those are all close friends of mine that I've made through networking. So. You know, it's it's not even just for building customers, but it's also for building your team and getting people who can help you. So that's the first part. Um, so I send out the audit, I or I send out an email, or I meet someone through networking, and they say, hey, I have someone who's interested. They want to talk to you. All right, cool. That means I have a first meeting, right? So what do I do at this first meeting that's going to get them interested in my product? That's what I have to focus on. But you can't be salesy, not in that first meeting. You're not trying to, so let's make that clear. In the very first meeting, you're never trying to go in and sell something. If you end up selling something, that's great for you. But if you go in and you try to sell something on the very first meeting, you're either not going to get them what they need, so the right results or the right campaign that they need to run for their marketing, or you're going to kind of push them away because you're just meeting them. It's like, a, it's like a first impression. You have to get them to like you first before they'll buy from you. That is half the game, and I know tons of people, tons of salespeople talk about this. Um, Grant Cardone talks about this. It's not about, it's not about your product necessarily. I mean, it is because they have to want your product, but it's more about getting them to like you. That's how you close the sale. So keep that in mind. Be likable. Be personable. Make them laugh. Make them have a good time. Don't make it just feel like a business meeting. Because when you do, it, it's just, I don't know, people don't, people aren't as attracted to seriousness all the time. You have to have some fun with it. So keep that in mind. Um, so the first meeting, what do I do? So basically, like I just said, you make them like you. But the other parts of it, so the questions you ask, what information you need. You need to learn about their business. That's what you're doing. You've already done research online, yes. But you do not know their business like they know their business. And that's what you're there to figure out. So. Um, some great questions to ask are, what marketing have they tried before? Or have they tried TV and radio? Or have they tried online before? And they got another digital marketing agency to do something for them, and it wasn't, it didn't work. You know, that's kind of the kind of stuff you need to know. Because then you can go, when you go to build your plan, your marketing plan for them, you say, okay, well, let me see the information that they left you when you separated from them for your digital marketing campaign, and let me see what they did so that way I know what was working and what was not working. So those are great questions to ask. Um, and not to mention, when you ask those questions, it makes them feel like you're, genu you're genuinely concerned. You're asking more in-depth questions that is going to make them believe that you really know what you're talking about. So, or not make them believe, but show them that you really know what you're talking about. Um, so the next part of that is, or another good question is, what are monthly sales currently and annually? Um, a lot of people don't ask that question, and that's an important question because if you don't know what they're making on a monthly basis currently, and you're trying to build a new marketing plan for them, how do you know what? How how do you know how much money you're trying to make for them to actually show that you're providing them value in their marketing dollars? So something to keep in mind: um, the monthly and the annual budget is what I like to ask because you know, like I said, you have to figure out where you're starting from on a monthly basis. You have to be able to tell them where you're going to increase their sales, and then on a yearly basis or an annual basis, how you um, intend to in improve on their sales. Um, and then another question really quick, um, what are they trying to accomplish? So you need to know their goals. If you go in there and you're trying to tell them that you're just going to make them the most badass company on social media, but their goal is to build a email list so that way they can remarket sales, you're not hitting what they need. And if you go in there trying to sell them social marketing when they're looking for email marketing, you're not going to get the sale. Go in, address their issues. Once you address their issues and make it clear that you're going to be able to take care of that issue, then you say, but here's the other side of it. 
we can do all of this email marketing, but if I don't set up A and B, so a website and social media platforms, you won't get the traction from the email because that's not how marketing works. So, or you know, however you want to explain it to make them see that they need to have all of the pieces working together for it to actually be effective. So those are just three quick, quick little questions. Um, I would look into you know good marketing questions, or not marketing questions, but good questions to ask on a sales call when you're doing something like that. There's all kinds of templates out there that give just good generalized questions to ask on your first sales call or meeting um, about a business owner, so, or about their business too. Um, so from there, after you ask the questions and you figure out all about their business, you wanna talk to, to talk to them about some possibilities. You don't want to actually sell them on anything, but you want to say, okay, cool, and I, I see what we have going on here, so here's what I'm thinking we could possibly do with your business. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is set you up on social media and make you the king there. Get you a great website and make sure that your website is your money site and all of your social medias are pointing to your website where you can make more sales. Um, I want to do an email marketing campaign where we can integrate everybody that you're getting from your social media campaign and your website and your landing pages into your market email marketing list so that way we can remarket them with material and educational information later. So that's kind of, you don't want to sell them on anything. You don't need to talk about price unless they specifically say, well, what is, what is it going to cost? And even then, what I typically do is, because you don't know. I can't tell them. They say, what is it going to cost? And I say, I usually say, well, it could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 plus a month. I don't know what you need and what I'm going, not to mention, I need your budget, what you think will be feasible, and then I need to know, you know what I'm going to have to do to make sales for your business. Because yes, it is all basically the same type of strategy, but there's different pieces that you involve to make it more effective or less effective, or leave out to make less effective. So. Um, that's really what you, you just want to make sure you talk with them about some possibilities. Don't try and sell it um, straight away. Don't try and throw numbers at it. And if they ask for numbers, say, let me put a proposal together and I'll be able to get you a more precise number. I don't like to give out numbers ahead of time because I can tell you a thousand right now. Um, but when I go to do the proposal, it could be 5,000 that you need to spend. And you know, if you don't like the 5,000, we can adjust from there and budget it down and take out little pieces. You know, I'm not saying your budget will be 5000 but that is just what I'm, the whole point is I have to see what I'm going to be able to do for your business first before I'm able to tell you a price. Um, so you don't want to give them a price, but you don't want to leave them and say, oh, I can't tell you a price, because then that just shuts them out. But you want to explain to them, look, I can't give you a price right this second because I don't know exactly what I'm going to need to do. So the first meeting is all about just finding out about their business so that way you can go back and create a proposal. Now. I have had a customer purchase from me on the first meeting before. Actually, my first client um, for this agency that I started bought on the first meeting from me, but that was because her and I are very close. She knows me very well. Um, so it can happen. It doesn't usually happen. Like very rarely will that happen because they want to see a foolproof plan. Um, I kind of went in, talked with her, and she loved everything I was saying and said, well, what do we need to do? So right there, and I, she had a lower budget, so I kind of knew what I could sell her right there that would be uh, still effective for her at her budget price. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. The whole first meeting is just to get information so that we can go back and build a proposal for them and give them what they actually need um, to make their business work. So um, like I said, what to do after that, you either need to build an audit if you haven't built it already so that way you can see what competitors are doing, what they need to work on um, to get better, sorry. Um, and then you need to build the proposal. So after you build the proposal, which is, the proposal is basically the, just their marketing plan. What you're gonna do for them from point A to point B to convert new customers or make new sales for their business. That's all it is. All right, so second meeting is where you actually present the proposal. So I guess let me back up and a little tip you should know about the first meeting. Um, I kind of didn't mention this, I mentioned it in the second meeting. After the first meeting and after every meeting, um, if it requires another meeting or if it requires you to come back and talk with them more before you make the sale, at that first meeting you want to go ahead and line up your next meeting. This is just a quick sales tip, um, sales 101 really. While you're at that first meeting you need to say, okay, cool, everything's done, you're wrapping up. When's the next time uh, we can get on your docket? But actually even more than that, what you need to do, because if you leave it open-ended they're less likely to respond. Give them two days, two days, give them options, give them two days that, to pick from and even two separate times where you could come over, come back and meet with them again for the proposal. You want to go ahead and line up that proposal date 
while you're there with them. It makes them less likely to cancel, less likely to not reschedule that or to schedule that appointment, um, or it makes them less likely to not schedule that appointment. So you want to set up that next meeting while you're there. So I usually end the meeting and I'm like, so glad um, you know we had this meeting. It was a really nice meeting you today um, and kind of getting to know your business. I want to go ahead and set up the next meeting for you know the proposal so that way I can show you exactly how much this will cost and what we need to do specifically for your business to be able to benefit from something like this. So how does April 1st or 3rd sound around like 9 or 11, one of those two times? And that's usually what I do. Um, so that way they have options. You gave them options. You didn't try and limit them and take, take their time from them because if you say April at 9, if you just give them one option, you're either taking something from them or they feel obliged to do it and people don't like to be forced into something. So give them that option to set up the next meeting. Um, and definitely do that because it will increase your conversion. Um, second meeting, now this is where you're presenting the proposal that you just built that goes over everything that you, know, you need to do for their business. So you present your proposal um, and really you, so I guess some quick things you need to know, you, you really want to be confident in your proposal. If they're asking questions, it's because they're concerned. It's not because they're, you know, worried about the cost or something like. They are worried about cost, but they're not. Their concern is going to be about the business and what they're trying to do as far as their goals. So, if you're giving them a presentation about marketing, how are you going to show them that they're going to be able to make money off of this? Um, and be confident in that response. And when you when you when you tell them something about, you know, their digital marketing plan, if you're not sure then tell them you don't know. Say, that's actually a very good question. I haven't had that question before. And that's a great way to kind of ease, ease out of not knowing something. I haven't had that question before. Let me go back today and I'll get an answer for you and we'll, we'll figure that out. So if you don't know the answer, say that. But if you do, be confident in your answer. Be prepared. Go over your proposal the night before and the morning before. That's what I usually do. So present your proposal. And after you get done presenting, you, you talk with them about the whole plan. They're usually going to have some questions. You filter through those questions and answer them to the best of your ability. Um, then there's going to be that kind of last little part of the meeting where that you show them the numbers. Um, and this is where they usually will get a little uncomfortable because it's usually expensive um, and it's not something that they necessarily want to do. They know they have to do it um, or they won't make money. So. This is where you get into the close and you just you lay the price down. Don't be, don't hesitate, don't say, um, well, the price is going to be around five. No, you say, so we got everything. Do you, and what I like to do is I stop them. Once I finish the last little slide about the marketing plan, I ask them, okay, so before we go forward any further, do you have any questions about anything I just went over? Does anything not make sense? Um, do I need to re-explain anything? Um, and then that's, that's where they'll give you some questions and stuff. And then you say, okay, great. So you understand everything. You understand how it's going to work. So let's look at the pricing. And I just flipped that page over. The total price for month one is going to be this. And I say it just straight as day. I don't, I don't sound weary about it. I don't, I don't <laughs> you know, sound nervous about it. I say it confident and I say it because I know that what I'm going to do for them is going to be able to help them. So that's why I'm confident in it. You say it confidently, it makes them feel confident in the price. It makes them feel like uh, you didn't just put a price together and say, well, we're going to try and charge you this much and hopefully that'll work for you. No. You say it confidently and you give them the price and you kind of go into a breakdown if you have to. That's usually what I do. You're going to allocate this much here, this much here, this much here, plus there's an ad budget of this much and you'll be spending on top of the monthly management fee for that. Just so you know, are we clear on everything there? And then you clear up pricing. Once you set that, then you say, great. So all I need you to do, and what I usually do is I grab... Um, I grab the proposal itself and I say, like I said before, no contracts, you don't have a commitment to me. This and then I draw a line on the proposal and I say, I just need you to sign here, say that we're good for month one, um, and then we'll get you started. I also have, and then two things you need to know. So I guess, well, these are separate, but continuing on from that, you have the credit card authorization form. So once you get them to sign the proposal, you whip out that credit card authorization form and say, I also need you to fill this out. So that way I can use your credit card to charge for PPC campaigns or Facebook ad campaigns, whatever it may be. Um, and this is that budget that I was talking about that goes on top of the monthly management fee. So that's something you wanna, you wanna mention to them. Now, if you present the proposal and you give them the price and you, you try to overcome the objections that they have, but they're still not 100% sure they wanna buy it yet, don't sit there and try to force it on them. That just means you need to set another meeting and you might need to adjust. They're not comfortable either with the price or they don't know if it's going to be effective still. They might still be confused. There's a lot of reasons why they're not going to buy right there. 
Um, so what you need to try and do is if they say, I'm, I just don't know about, uh, I need to take some time to think about it, that's what you'll usually get. We need to think about it. So, and this is, so overcoming objections is something if you haven't done a lot of research on, you're going to want to do this because when you get, it doesn't matter how many customers or potential clients you line up and go propose or pitch a proposal to. If you don't know how to close them and get through their objections that they're going to have, you're not going to close them anyways because every business owner will have obje objections. Well, why am I spending $5,000 a month, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going to ask those kind of kinds of questions and you want to be able to put them at ease and let them know that it's going to be okay. So if they ask you those questions and you make it through the objections and they still aren't sure yet, they say, oh, well, I'm just not sure yet. I want to take some more time. You say, okay, well, what is it specifically that, you know, you're not sure about? Is it something in the price? Is it something with the actual campaign? Have you tried something on here before and it didn't work? Um, and you just want to ask deeper questions. So if they, you know, you get through all of that and you say, you figure out that it's pricing, it's too expensive for them. It means you have to set up another meeting, right? So this is that third meeting. Sometimes it takes that many with marketing. So you set up that third meeting and then basically you're going to want to either do one of two things. You adjust the price because maybe it was too expensive. So you come down a little bit on everything that on your services that you're going to perform. So that way it lowers the price. Or you need to figure out if you need to reconfigure the whole marketing plan together. Not necessarily reconfigure the whole thing like as far as what you're going to do for them, but how much of everything you're going to do on a sp like if you're going to do it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Um, you know, those are just kind of the things you need to figure out. If, if that's the reason why they're not buying right then, you need, to, you need to make some adjustments there. So And then remember, from the first meeting, you did the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to set that second meeting. So once you set the, or the third meeting, so while you're there, while you have them there in front of you, say, okay, great, I understand the price isn't, you know, right, right yet. I don't want to give you just another price off the top of my head. That doesn't make sense. How about this? I'm going to go back and you can either set the third meeting um, or you can email them the third pricing. I prefer not to email. That's only if they're super busy and you can kind of tell that they might not buy it. Um, but you better be pretty sure about that. But you want to set that next meeting um, with them to go over the adjusted proposal. Say, you know, I'm going to go back, I'll adjust this proposal, we'll lower the budget and what we're going to do specifically starting off. And, you know, as we increase in sales volume, we'll increase the budget and we can increase what we do from there. So then you set your next meeting. All right, so after you set that next meeting, um, if you haven't closed them, so there's two, or I guess after step three, there's two parts that you want to do. So you've either closed them, which means you have their business, you're about to get paid. Good thing, for, <laughs> good for you. Um, or you have to do that next meeting again. So basically, you adjust your proposal. So next part after that is if you do close the deal, you send them the kickoff form that um, I've talked about before. And the kickoff form goes into even more information, gathers information that you might not have uncovered when you were doing your first meeting with them about their business. Um, it asks them questions like, you know, sales revenue, goals, stuff like that. Maybe questions they didn't answer at first. So you send them that, it gets more information for you, and then you start putting the, the campaign together. And that's it. I mean, you, you do your job as the marketer. Um, collect all their information for them, get all the account information, stuff like that. I mean, that's what you have to do. Now, if you don't close the meeting and you have to set up, you know, the next meeting, you go back home, you adjust the proposal, and you set the new meeting, and you go in and you try and close it. And that's it. Really, I mean, the, the steps to it or the process to it is is that. It's, it's not complicated. It's very simple. The complicated part is knowing how to sell someone. Um, so mimicking body language, knowing what to say, how to say it, knowing how to react to certain things. It seriously is. That's why scripts, some like um, sales scripts, work really well sometimes. I don't use a sales script because I like to go off the hip. It works better for me and I'm usually pretty good at doing that and most people say that but if you've never done digital marketing before you don't know 100% about what you're talking about. So writing a script in the beginning while you're still new to digital marketing might be beneficial for you. Um, I would definitely recommend it since I mean it's just so much to know even at a even at you know where I'm at with my experience I still have a lot that I have to learn and I'm still learning on a regular basis so you know to try and keep up with everything can be difficult so write out a script if you need to um, and kind of practice it don't make it seem scripty when you go in there god forbid do not take a piece of paper in there and read off of it to them but you know have it sort of semi memorized to where you can go through each part um, of the of the pitch or whatever you're doing um, and make it seem organic but follow a, a flow that is easy to remember so that way you know you don't feel as 
overwhelmed in your head while you're doing a pitch because that's man this meeting the first the actual proposal meeting that I did and I do not recommend this I only did it because I knew it was time sensitive and I wanted to get him on now I did not want another marketing agency pitching to him because um, he is a very big client for me so we had a meeting set to go meet at his office and then he had to actually move it and we had to grab lunch while proposing to him or pitching the proposal to him which sucked. <laughs> you do not want to be eating while you're pitching a proposal. It makes it very difficult to keep your mind on what you're doing while, you know, maintaining a casual eating speed at the same time. Like it is not recommended. So, um, but you know, those are just things you want to know about a sale that's going to help you. So look into some sales techniques. If you're finding that you're getting customers to answer your calls and then you go to pitch them and you can't close them on the proposal, that means you're, you, something's wrong with either your proposal. You're either pitching them way too high or you're not listening to what their needs are. It could be one of that, but it usually has something to do with sales and you're not using the right techniques to get them to like you and to trust you because it's all, it's, that's all it is. It's two things. Make them like you, make them trust you. Once they trust you, they'll listen to anything you have to say because they know you're good for your word. Once they like you, they're more, so it starts with liking, then they trust you. Once they like you, they're more willing to open up to you to where you can get to the point where you make them trust you. So those are just my tips, um, some sales tips, some marketing tips, how to close the deal for your business um, to get you know some revenue in for your companies. But anyways, I'm super busy. I wanted to make this video, guys, because I know I haven't been as active on here. I've been crazy busy trying to get all this stuff going. I'm actually set up to do... The video shoot for the digital marketing course next week I have a guy doing all of my video for me and editing so that'll be helpful a lot and I'll be able to push this out I know I've said another week another week I've said it twice but I really mean it this time we have the video content coming <laughs> so that'll be out um, so if you haven't um, heard about the digital marketing school yet definitely pay attention for that that's coming really soon if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel subscribe below um, and make sure to follow because I'm gonna I release all kinds of free content that people are you know in the digital marketing space they found useful so um, definitely follow and subscribe me there follow me on snapchat at serial ENT um, serial like serial like the name um, and then also if you haven't checked out my dropship company if you are in men's or if you're a man actually no we opened up a women's line like a week ago because that was doing so well so we have men's and women's apparel now for you guys and gals out there that like to look super fresh <laughs> that's kind of our our thing um, we focus on younger adults or you know middle it not middle-aged adults but like 25 to like 35 you know that's our demographic but if you're in that age range and even if you're not in that age range um, and you like cool socks if you like belts if you like just men's of men's apparel and fashion we've got some really cool uh, Wayfair sunglasses that we just got just check us out on there it's socks apparel s o k s dash apparel dot com um, but I'm super excited for everything that's going on as you guys can tell it's I'm starting to make some good money here um, and it's it's just it, everything is rolling because I'm staying on top of it so if you guys are not having success just keep grinding it will work out eventually I promise but it is a grind it is a constant grind I'm working about 70 to 80 hours a week right now so time spent now is gonna be well worth it later but I'm gonna get out of here so I can go actually work on some stuff that is going to make you guys happy like that digital marketing school um, and my marketing clients we have a lot to do so I'm gonna go get working on that but hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions comments or concerns snapchat me or yeah, Snapchat me um, or leave me a comment in the comments below. Like this video too. I love this kind of stuff um, and I want to see other people that need this kind of information get it. Um, and they can't get it unless you guys like it. So like it, comment it, share it if you can. And like I said, thank you guys so much. So Serial Entrepreneur out. You guys have a great weekend.